Alright ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We are in for our fourth series of the day. We'll be Team Ginnisbrus once again up against 496 Gaming. And John, this draft is going so darn fast, but it is MLP Dota and John X Fire. Do you want to get into the draft, John? It has gone rather quickly. It certainly has gone fast, and this time around, 496 does pick up that Ember Spirit themselves. As we mentioned earlier on, this is a bit of a rematch from those open qualifiers. Of course, Ginnisbrus did take that 2-0, if I recall right. And that was off the back of, again, some stellar Ember play coming out from Genesis Press. Of course, Gunner is just really darn good on that hero. But this time around, 496, they want to show us what they can do with that Ember Spirit themselves. And they have the Oracle as well as backup. You know, decent control, good regen, good sustain coming out from them. But Genesis Press manages to get hold of that Morphling for 23 Savage. We have seen him play that hero as well. And it has worked out to great effect. So... You have a pretty solid opening for both sides right now. Yeah, certainly do. Of course, we've seen 23 Savage on that Morphling before, and he, he just does 23 Savage things, right? He farms up so darn quick, and as soon as he's ready, he joins the team, and essentially all his team has to do is buy him enough time to, uh, to get that farm up to the point where, uh, of course, he is going to be able to excel. Of course, 496, though, they picked up that Ember Spirit. And again, we see another team that is aware of Gunner's Ember. They will not allow him to have it, which is unfortunate for us, John, because we love watching it. Still, though, I, I wonder what Jinnus Bros picks up for him this time around. Yeah, it would be interesting. Last time we saw that ban out, it did end up being the Monkey King coming out, so... We'll see what they do opt for here in Genesis Bros. I like what 496 has done, though. They see that Morphling, they band out the Earthshake. They understand what happens when you have that combination come out. They understand the potency of that combination, but you know, there's another combination that could oh, come out from Genesis Bros that we haven't seen. That get me excited, John. I mean, I don't know if it's going to come out, but I would love to see the Tiny come out. <laughs> I would definitely love to see that Tiny come out. It's just so sad. We see it once in one sparkling moment in China. Just one moment, and it never came back. And I'm like, there's so much potential for that. You know, it, it just, it's just so beautiful to see it unfold. And you could certainly work it out here for Genesis. I think it does fit in their playstyle as well. Just that early aggression you can take off with the tiny, is just pretty darn strong. And I think it does work out. But again, what they like to do, they like to buy space for Savage with every single hero. And then when Savage is ready to go, that's when he comes online and, you know, rips up the back line, takes over in the match, and sets the pace. Yep. But that does require a very aggressive line across four heroes. Let's see what they do. Pick up 496. They go with that Shadow Shaman. So you have, again, very good single target control. Good push with those Serpent Wards coming out as well. And great wave clear with that Eater Shock. So it's a fairly balanced opening from 496. And the Spirit Breaker comes back out for Genesis. But it's not too surprising. They've almost they've picked this hero every single time now. I think pretty much out of all the games we've watched from them, they've only had to skip out on it once. And you know, we have been watching, I believe, Febby on this hero. He was it Febby? Yeah, yeah, it was Febby. So he never cancels his charge. He always goes all in. He sets that aggression, and you have that support duo again of the AA Spirit Breaker. It's something Genesis is very comfy with. It forms the backbone of that aggression, right? So you always have these two. The mid hero does tend to flux now since teams have realized that Gunner does contribute a lot to that aggression. But again, they've kind of adjusted. We might see the Monkey King come out here. I don't think it's actually too bad. The Ember Spirit might make it a bit hard though, for sure. Especially if you're going to be in the tree line. He remnants through you and you're suddenly just stunned. That's not going to be a good time. It's going to be interesting to say the least, John. 496 Gaming, though, running out of time. Uh, only 10 seconds reserve time left for this fourth pick. Which is kind of intriguing because of the draft going so quick. Genus Plus, of course, just holding on to their reserve time completely. 496 Gaming, they will go for the Beastmaster. And Genus Plus. You know, John, you're, you're Filipino. What is that, uh, that line, that goodness gracious? What, what does it mean? The last few words. Uh, you mean the poppable part? Yes. You know, it's, like, it's, like, it's like when you're so impressed by someone's control, by, by how dominant they are, that they're, they're very dad-like, so papa, right? So uh, goodness gracious, poppable. It's like, oh, yeah. I see. I, I think I see. That's, that's my takeaway. Like, I could be completely wrong. I could be called out here for being a fake Filipino, but 
that's that's how I always understood that. You know, it's like it, it's a thing. Like uh, calling someone calling someone that is a thing. I think it came up came out from a Filipino show. I forget, but there's an actor we actor you used to refer to as Papa something. I forget. It, it, I am so out of touch with my own culture. I'll be <laughs> frank, but that's that's as far as I can tell. I think that's the intention. And oh, they go back to that Timbersaw yeah, for four of. The, the, the draws from Dinos Bros, they're, they're always so similar, right? Like, March is always in the AA. The Spirit Break is always coming out for Febby. Uh, we've, we've seen Ferev play that Timbersaw so many times now. And 23 Savage, he switches it up a bit. Like, he'll go to the Morphling. You know, you'll see him pick up the Naga Siren. He does opt to, you know, choose a couple position ones. But most of the time, Dinos Bros, they don't really hide with their draft. They're usually pretty, I don't want to say stagnant. Because it works every time. But it is rather stagnant in a sense. It's just that nobody's taken advantage of the fact that oh. it's stagnant. And now the Wraith oh. King comes out and... What's this? Uh, that's how, what how I'm asking you. Hmm. It's, it's interesting to say the least. Uh, yeah, I mean, you could go with Gunner Morphling, I guess. I just don't think that... You know, with the way Morphlings go, you want them to take it slow. You want them to farm up a bit. You can be aggressive early. Don't get me wrong. You definitely can. It's just we haven't really seen that too often, but if they do opt to go that way, they could. I, I think it's more likely we'll see me perhaps Gunner, Raid King, or Timbersaw. Like, Timbersaw mid isn't too bad. I'm not sure how you'd enjoy it against Ember Spirit. That doesn't sound like the worst or best. Oh! Here we go What's again. What's this? I believe we saw 496 pick this up in their match up against Genus Bros. I can't remember exactly, but I'm pretty sure we did, John. Now, it didn't work out very well, but I love seeing this hero. It's one of my all-time favorites. The 458 Shadow Fiend will come out. It does seem to make sense up against that Timbersaur especially. Obviously, you need some decent magic damage, and the raises do do quite a bit. In terms of the hero itself, though, how much confidence does it inspire? Probably not very much. It's got to kind of have you worried as well, because Gunner can just morph into the Shadow Fiend and have all those raises to himself as well, if he wanted to. Uh, more yeah, than likely, it's gonna be a lot. knowing yeah, Gunner, be a lot of I mean, knowing Gunner, John, after they first picked the Ember, he just said, "Give me the Morphling, so I can just become the Ember. I don't need the remnants <laughs> anyway." <laughs> I mean, it's possible, right? It's definitely possible. This is going to be a bit of a shakeup, though. Gunner on arguably the farm heavier hero, and Savage on arguably the earlier game hero this time around. So it is a bit of a shakeup. But yeah, this is going to be interesting. The Shadow Fiend makes an appearance here for 496. It's not the most common mid nowadays. Of course, it used to be the epitome of a mid hero, but you haven't seen too much of it. I don't. It wasn't picked up in their open qualifier game up against uh, Genesis Press. I did check it out. It didn't appear there. So it, it's really the first time we've seen it pop out from 496 themselves. We have seen this in different regions pop out, though. Like We have seen a couple of teams fall back to that Shadow Fiend, and it hasn't been the most successful, I want to say. It has had its issues. You certainly do have to get that early start going. With your supports, you're really going to have to be aggressively rotating down mid. That's one of the things with a... Uh, Shadow Fiend. He's one of those old school mids which you need to support. You can't leave him alone that 1v1 for too long. He needs to snowball. So you're gonna need to make a couple of rotations from 496 to help out that SF, give him the early stacks, give him those early kills, and then he starts to really get big. Well, we'll go into it, John. 496 looking for their revenge in this best of one. Oh, Genus Bros. Obviously looking to try to find their second win of the day. 496, a very unorthodox draft once again coming out from the Vietnamese stack, though. It's always a, a treat to watch these heroes come out. And, uh, good luck, Happy Feet, is the call, apparently. From 23 <laughs> Savage. I'm not sure what he means by that, John, but... <laughs> I, I, I don't think the line of 496 was ever in Happy Feet, so... I mean, 23 Savage is a pretty uh, pretty funny dude. Uh, he, he has been. Yeah. <laughs> Even just in Lobby. You just like it because he talks to you, John. I don't think he's ever talked to me. He like, I don't think he was talking to me. He was talking to the admin. He was talking to someone. He was calling someone a beast. He I'm not sure who. That's the thing. Oh, John. You... Unbelievable, John. You always just ignore everybody when they're trying to talk to you. Oh, my. too good for everybody. <laughs> oh, I mean, they, they group up four heroes up top. Well, three heroes up top from Genesis Bros. 
trying to find something. Unfortunately, won't. Good little uh, game sense there from Red. Understanding something was coming from this uh, very aggressive oh. team. You have a Here very, very early pause going on. 458 having a few issues. It's one of those things about this Tunis Brass uh, team, right? Like, they're so aggressive that you can't actually... Like, you've got to be very careful about trying to take an extra bounty rune off them because they generally will have three heroes waiting for you to try. Yeah, they never let go of these kinds of objectives early on. They always go for it quite aggressively. It does look like they will have to give up their bot runes, though. As, you know, there's only so much you can do on a timber saw. Yeah. To be fair, like, there, there's not much that goes on with the timber saw. And he doesn't want to be forced to take, you know, an unfavorable level 1 skill. Because this is when Timbersaw is at his weakest. Level 1 to about level 3 is when he really just does not enjoy the lane. It, it gets a bit hard for him to find what he wants. Forev, of course, has played this hero. Um, he did play it for their first game today. Pretty great success. And let's see if he can replicate that here. As it does look like they, again, get the charge off from Febby. Yeah, that BB. Don't be in trouble for Rev. Doesn't really have any abilities though, so can't really go for any kill attempt here. Of course, we do see Vivian on the Ember. Gonna be there up against Forever on that Timber Saw, so it shouldn't be the worst matchup in the world for him though. Mm. To be fair, when you don't go for those chains, I mean, that Whirling Death can really be annoying. Vivian gonna have to be careful, not be near any trees. In fact, 458 finds Gunner mid lane. I wasn't expecting it that early on. Oh my. Looks like it was just some raises being expended, but a level 1 kill onto a Morphling mid lane as an SF. That is not great news for Gunner. It definitely isn't. This is one of, uh, one of the real weaknesses of the Morphling mid. He doesn't enjoy the magic spam coming out. And 458 did look to have, like, what was that? Two mangoes he just popped straight. So he does invest heavily to try to find these kills. And if Gunner can hold out, that's actually a lot of regen that's going to be missing from... 458, but despite having that nice first blood, it came at a pretty big cost. Looks like he's already got that bottle queued up anyway. He'll have it coming out very soon. Meanwhile, there is a charge going on. Febby gonna go after that SF, so 458 gonna get stunned up, but again, no real kill potential here quite yet. He's gonna cop a fair bit of harassment <laughs> though from Febby. Does have a salve and shared tango still available to be used though, so he'll be okay with this. Of course, up at the top lane as well. Red and Yassi going to be up against 23 Savage. And you have March there on the AA. Pretty deadly combination. Just in the uh, Wraith Fire Blast and the uh, and the Cold Feed. To get frozen up, it is rather hard to survive. We'll see if it does come into play this laning phase. But I imagine they'll go for it quite a few times. Definitely so. We've seen this combination much more commonly with the Sven. But it does still work out with something like the Raid King. In fact, it could work out better. Raid King's early damage can really flux with that Mortal Strike. So if you get the lucky crit, it's an easy kill with that stun follow-up. And, you know, it should work out well for the side of uh, Genesis. Although right now, the lane isn't going as smoothly. I mean, you're still okay with Savage. He's 9-2. to two, But you would like it a bit higher. Of course, in that mid lane, Gunner has started taking over in terms of last hits. 4-5-8, stun to 4 behind, and... He still is spamming out those uh, those raises, but it just hasn't been great. Meanwhile, Vivian going to be in trouble bot lane for Rev with those whirling death spams. We'll be able to find him in the end. And again, that's one of the weaknesses about the Ember up against the Timbersaw. You don't go for those chains early on anymore, so... If you do get a couple too many whirling deaths placed on you, you will melt very, very quickly. Definitely so. It, it's going to be very hard for Vivian to... Completely dominate this lane, especially since Forev has hit that point where Timbersaw just kind of takes over. Level 4 upwards until 6, maybe 8 is when you can't contest. And Vivian at level 3, really, there's just not much you can do. You have the Flame Guard, but Forev doesn't care for the damage. Febby, meanwhile, mid lane, again charging in onto 458. Top lane, though, they are going to lose Yassi, perhaps. In fact, no, he'll survive and go for the Shackles. Now Red going to try and punish for going after the support, though he can't even do that. Raid 5 last will go out from Savage. Red being charged up, but he doesn't seem to be aware of it. Febby should be able to clean up here. There is... Well, Red can't survive. They do end up finding the damage. 23 Savage will be the one to pick up that. And now they'll go after Yassi as well. Can they get lucky with the bash? Not quite, but he does have charge available now. 
Still, he doesn't have any follow-up from the rest of his team, but he may be able to find this by himself. Goes after it. Still no lucky bashes coming out, but there's one coming out. It is underneath the T2 tower, though, so Febby will be forced to back. And of course, Red will return to the lane immediately on that Beastmaster. So, it's a mid lane, it looks like. We'll cancel the charge off. You know, speaking about that mid lane, Gunner has actually found the lead over that SF now. So, despite giving out first blood, Gunner is still finding farm here. 24 to 12 compared to 4, 5, 8, 16 to 4. And again, after that, after expending that first set of uh, mana regen, he doesn't really have too much laning presence, especially since he missed out on a couple of waves with going for that level 1 Shadow Raise. So he's not going to be having as much of a good time. He needs to expend all this mana to apply Harass on Gunner. And Gunner can just ju juggle around his HP, regen back up, and go for the last hits again. Savage. Could be in trouble. 458. Gonna make a rotation up as the SF. They have the shackles available. The Yassi not in range, but he will find him in the end. Still, nobody really close by to dish out the damage. Now Savage actually going to turn it around. There are three heroes there. Now he realizes that he needs to get out though. 458. He has a raise, although what a juke Ooh. coming out. The boar's still slowing him down though. They will not connect the raise, however. Savage, he's still running out of there. 458 though, eventually will find it. A close call though, coming out for them, almost missing out on that one. Meanwhile, Gunner ended up finding that BB in the mid lane on the Oracle. Yeah, that's a nice kill onto Savage. And again, we haven't seen him pressure too much in lane this time around. He is going to be copying it, of course, from the rotations of 496. But the aggression is still coming out from Genesis. Yeah, they just kind of TP the Oracle back in. That BB doesn't want to die right now. And Gunner going to switch his attention to 458. Though Yassi now pretty darn low trying to control up Febby. That is a tanky cow you're trying to go after though. And they will find him in the end. They'll lose Yassi in the process. Now 458 going to go after March. But the Cold Feet does come out before he dies. 458 should be able to get out of here perfectly fine. It looks like it will be the case. Though Gunner still looking around for him. But it looks like he will back off, and this time around, 496 will be able to get the uh, get the advantage from that engagement. Though I say that, Vivian is being chased down and will end up dying once again to Forev. This time just by himself. Just before he hits that level 6 mark, and Forev now out leveling him by 2. Yeah, and again, you're reaching that point with Forev's Timber Saw where you can't contest him. He's going to be able to take this tower for pretty much for free. The vision coming out from Febby as well. I don't think they're going to commit, but again, it, it's just so much coming out from Genesis. Their aggression working out in favor. This time around, 496 isn't taking it lying down. They definitely are pumping out their own aggression quite nicely as well. It's just that you are facing issues. Right now, your SF is not having the best of times. Going to be working towards that Yules first, but he's very, very far behind that Morphling Gunner again, just having a good time down mid. Top lane, Red gonna be in trouble now as well. The charge will give vision though. Yassi does manage to find March, but Red really doesn't want to lose his life like this. Though Savage, he will get taken down once again from 458. Great rotation, and he just lands the raises every single time. The charge eventually does get cancelled off from Febby. He just wasn't gonna make it in time to actually get anything done. This guy has no children. Meanwhile, bot lane, Vivian. Again gonna find himself low, though he has remnants this time around. <laughs> Still is holding out quite a bit and now will commit them as soon as the Chakram comes out. So he'll get away, but doesn't really have much space to farm on this Ember. Nevertheless, a 5-6 for 496 is looking pretty darn good for them. 458, gonna find Savage again though. This time around, March is there with the Cold Feet. Still fortunes in to purge off and now he finds the Wraith King before he goes down. That BB though, gonna be in trouble and he also goes down a Gunner. Can they find any more? The go after red on the Beastmaster. The Raw will be committed to just try and get away. Still level 2 chains are up and running. Red still going to be alright. Chakram to clear the trees and it looks like Forever will not be able to find him in the end. Dang, 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 mother Again, it has been pretty even trades overall. It still does somewhat benefit Jinnisbrus despite losing that Raid King. You are still finding a lot more in Gunner and again, those early rotations are paying off. Mid lane, red. Gonna say hello to Febby. Febby does have the charge available, so he'll be fine. Let's just go towards that mid lane. Top lane though. 
There might be a bit of action. They'll get the tier 1 tower on the side of Jinless Brunts, but they are surrounded. They'll go for the Shackles and the Fortune's End onto that Timber. Now the Razor's coming in and the Hex. They control him up though. Forever still alive somehow. He gets out of there just barely now. Healing up through the Purifying Flames, but he does go down in the end. Now Gunner, what do you do all alone? Well, you're not Febby. He'll charge in. 458 is going to be the target though. Yassi is so darn low and they actually get Gunner. The Purifying Flames, just so much damage early on. And now Febby, he's overextended in 496. 8 to 10 now. Looking pretty darn good. Definitely, sir. They're, they're really just finding the counter aggression now. Although, whoa, March. March, Ice Blast from a mile away. And they're just giving it back and forth to each other, these two. <laughs> you know, guys, there are casters casting the game. There's no necessity for this. Vivian. <laughs> Remnants, he's already out there. He gets charged up, and now the cold feed, it's not gonna be enough. He ruminant, ooh, remnant out in time. Well, Rev. Looks like he may have been in trouble, but they won't bother trying to dive the timber. You sit in a 9 to 10 now. 10 minutes in. Febby, gonna go for another charge on the Spirit Breaker. Will show himself with that Indy's rune, though. He'd run through the T1 tower, though. He just never stops this guy. He's going to hit 458, though. That BB is there. Now he's in trouble. He'll try and run away. Red does have the raw, though. And Febby. That was some wishful thinking coming out from him. But again, we, we see this over and over again. And it's kind of like, is he buying space for his cause? For the most part, yeah. This is what Jinnispress always does. You just have Febby running around Come like up. this. Eventually pays off. In trouble, Raw will be there in 458, dishing out the damage with the Razor. So now the Yules comes out, and Requiem will be able to burst him down in the end. 458 once again finding the kill on this Morphling. And suddenly, even though Gunner was quite a bit ahead in terms of last hits, in terms of net worth now, you see 458, he's taken over. He definitely has. And again, he has been making this uh, SF work despite that rough start. He really did have a bit of a rough start. He had to roam around early on, but it is paying off. He's starting to find that farm. The issue now for 496 is on Vivian. Vivian has not. He's just suffered on his lane so far. He's going to have to find a way to catch up. The good thing for 496 is that you can say the same thing about Savage. Savage has not had a spectacular run this time around, not having that free form he usually ends up with. And that could be the deciding factor because, again, we've seen that Raid King come online late and it hasn't been impressive. Ah. Looks like Forev gonna go and try to push in that mid T1 tower, so he's still feeling confident on the Timbersaw. Does have that Hood of Defiance up, so that does help against these raises. 458, though, not gonna be one to back off on the SF either. Doesn't have Requiem available, though, so you don't really have that kill potential on the Timber. But he's just going to be happy with holding this up, this T1 tower down. Forever will eventually just give up on it. So both teams now, that part of the game where they're just kind of happy to just allow each other to farm. I say that. Forever gonna get caught out here. He does get hexed as well. Still no Requiem available, so I don't know if they have the damage. Now the Ice Blast will come in. Charge from Febby. He will cancel it off this time around. Vivian. Oh, that's a lot of damage that gets dealt before your remnants out. And uh, Forever just finds himself back to full HP anyway. He just doesn't doesn't mind all that. That's the power of the Timber Saw. He really just doesn't care for that early damage at all. And in fact, he kind of enjoys it. This is the strong point for the Timber. He does kind of excel between this time and maybe about 25, 35 minutes at max. Although usually it does feel like he tapers off much, much earlier. Top lane, Febby, gonna get caught out. The Serpent Wards being dropped on top and he does end up going down. Now with those Serpent Wards as well, they'll just go straight after that top T1 tower. It's gonna be a fairly easy one at that. Or if he'll actually TP in, and I suppose, just due to the fact that he's so tanky, you can't actually shut him down right now. And he will actually stop the push. That's a pretty nice win for Jinnis Bros. That does waste at least one ultimate, so they're not going to be able to find that objective. Although, 
it does drop fairly low. So the next time they do want to go for it, it's probably just gone. And you force a rotation out from Forev as well, who was being annoying down mid. But I think that's the game plan here for Jinnispris. Wherever they are going to push, they just toss Forev there to stop it. And that could be enough time for them to find space on Savage, who is still playing for catch up farm. He has jumped ahead, at least, of the other cores. But he's still down there. He's definitely not as farmed as the Timber Saw and as, you know, the Morphling as well. He has a lot to work towards, especially if he wants to hit that good timing on the Radiance. Bot lane. Bit of a charge going out, 458. Does have the Eels available, but he's going to be careful about this. They will cancel the, the, uh, the charge off. There was two supports coming down from the side of 496 to help out. So we remain at a 9 to 13, still a 1k net worth lead to the side of the Radiant. Radiant are nice scan coming out from the side of Genesis Brass, and they do smoke up as well. 458 does manage to already find that boundary room, but it looks like they are going to go for the fight. Still, Raze is going out, charge. It was evaded by the Yules, but the Ice Pass is going to be nice. Still, the Rec Room is going to be massive as well. Onto Febby. He is still alive, though, and gets another strike off onto Yassi. Still, 458. Able to run out of there. And in fact, they are going to get everyone out of there. Nobody actually going down quite yet. Now, Fortune's in. Febby. Still around the area, gonna get caught out, and now the Razors with the chains tries to go for the charge, but does get hexed up by Yassi. And 458 will once again pick up the kill on the SF. And immediate rotations up towards that top lane with a C gunner on that Morphling. He'll TP out as well, though, he'll be perfectly fine. Still, though, 496, they've been really finding the advantage every single time they get into engagement. They definitely have, and that, th that does show on the kill board 9 to 15 now. There is still a 1k lead on gold for Jinnis Bras, and again, it does look like they want to slow this game pace down. They are throwing their supports out there every single time as the sacrificial lambs. We've seen Febby die a lot of times now, we've seen March die a lot of times now, and that is them trying to buy that space. Is it paying off yet? It does look like they are finding the farm at the very least on Gunner, right? He's still up there in terms of net worth. He's going to have his Manta style up fairly soon. And after that, he still needs a lot more to work on. Of course, the Morphling, again, takes a quite fair bit of itemization to really be online. It's it's not like his Ember Spirit, where he can just play around with nothing more than drums and Maelstrom. You need a lot more to really be comfy in front as the Morphling. You're just way too squishy without your stat items. It does look like he has his Manta style up now, though. 4, 5, 8. And he charged up on the SF again. He has plenty of help around the area, and Febby will just cancel it off. Holding on to that vision for a little bit on the SF. Like you said, Gunner, gonna have that Manta style up and ready to go. Looks like he's going for the Ethereal Blade up next. And that's gonna be great up against that SF, just trying to burst him down immediately. Plus Vivian though, does have the Maelstrom up now on the Ember. 23 Savage, how's he doing? He's going for the Radiance build once again. He's getting pretty close to the Sacred Relic. and You've gotta, you know, kinda consider the fact that he has been just in the jungle the whole time. So he hasn't taken any lane farm away from any of his other cores. So it has taken a bit longer. But as he's going for that, 458 now on the SF has a full BKB up. So 10 second BKB duration. Gonna be available. And in fact, they found somebody mid lane. Bebby gonna get Serpent Water up and Shackle just gets melted for Rev. Gonna jump in with the Chakra. But again, he doesn't really have the lockdown. They're actually gonna try and turn around on him. Chains come out. Still way too tanky though, but now the Hex comes out as well and the Raze is starting to dish their damage out. Meanwhile, Gunner will morph into the Ember, as expected. How much work can you get done without the Remnants? Apparently quite a bit, Vivian. Gets pretty low, is forced back off. Still though, one kill being picked up by 496 on Febby once again. That is for the price of nothing. Uh, Genus Plus do find nothing at all for that kill. They definitely don't think, and again, it does feel like Genesis Press is really just tossing their supports up to the wind here. They've just let Febby charge in, in blind, and just really have him sacrifice himself. He's had an urn for a very long time now. He, I don't think he's ever picked up a charge since picking it up, so... That's a bit of a worrying sign for Genesis Press, but certainly does look good for 496. Again, they're finding their timings, they've got their items up, they're starting to pick up on the farm game, even Vivian is starting to play catch-up quite nicely. So you do have to kind of worry about Genesis here. They're starting to lose out on a bit too much to compensate for some good late game later on. A 
bot lane as well. Starting to be pushed in by Red on that Beastmaster now. There will be a defense though coming out. Febby, he'll be there on that Spirit Breaker. And somehow, Genesis Bros still manages to maintain the lead in terms of net worth. Now at 2k their way. Look at this, mostly just Gunner on the Morphling farming like a madman. Oh, Savage. Yeah, he's gonna get caught out. He does have the reincarnation this time around, so they can't kill him off. Well, they can if you kill him off twice. They are gonna go for a 2, 4, 5, 8. He's going for the Requiem. Serpent wants to drop. Though Savage out of there. In fact, they use him up. Where's the help though? Savage is dropping low and does end up going down. Now Gunner though, gonna move in with Febby. They go straight after that Oracle first. Though. He's not really copping too much damage. He gets the False Promise off on himself and now Vivian jumps in with the Remnants. The Raw there as well. Febby getting low and he should drop and does. And now for Rev, what can you do by yourself? Probably a lot, but you're out of mana, sir. They will fortune send him up. Can they control him long enough to take him out is the question. The Shackles come out as well. Red kind of poking the bear and Ferev eventually will end up going down. 496, a four-man wipe coming out. The only man to survive was March and he was across the map. This is really not looking good for Genus Prisoner. They've lost a lot from that last team fight. They've lost their slight network lead now and 496 is finding grip on this map. It looks like they've managed to find a solution to that aggression from Genesis. Just play as aggressively, play with cores that don't require too much farm. And they have worked it out quite well. Savage, he's not having a good time. He has that Radiance up now, but that's not going to be enough at this point in the game. 20 minutes in, he's going to need a bit more. It does look like he's going for the Blink BKB next, and that might make the difference. But you are waiting on all your other cores to farm up as well. Gunner, still trying to finish up that E-Blade, and... 2.6k gold, he's still 600 away from at least the Eagle Song. And then you have to farm into that Ghost Scepter as well. So you do have to wait a bit more from Genispris. They've lost a lot of space on the map. But we have seen this at least once before. They play from behind. They want to take that late game. They, they, they try to buy space with aggression from their other cores and buy space for one big core. But this time around, they've lost every single core in the engagement so far. They're going to lose Savage again. Savage reincarnation available in five seconds or so, but it's not going to be long enough. Ice Blast will come in and hit 458, but there's no follow up to it. Savage not having a great game at all, but 496, they're looking so darn good right now, and they're moving for more. Can they find a target? Wild Axes will hit March, though Forever is there to defend, though. No, Raw comes out. Now Febby charges in as well. Here comes Gunner. He'll take down Yassi at the very least. Can they find any more? Looks like that BB is going to be the target and a fortune's end on the Oracle. Febby gets another strike and now the False Promise though will come out. But he is almost guaranteed to die here. I don't think he can out heal this much damage. And he understands he is dead. In fact, he drops some wards before he goes. But they're going to be pretty obvious wards that he wards. So I'm not even sure if that was worthwhile. Doesn't feel like it. They even spotted out that one ward anyway. Right for the sentry spot. 458. Requiem. Not gonna really be on point. Gunner's still gonna be fine. He's gonna BKB TP out of there. <laughs> that is a ballsy play. That is a very ballsy blink reveal. It doesn't pay off, but you know that it takes a lot of guts to do that. I I admire that. I appreciate that from 458. We're well, going for the Roshan now though. Knowing the knowing the Requiem's down, you've got the raw down, the false promises down. Everything's down, John. Can they find it though? Jinnus Brass. 496 are moving in. They'll find a hex off onto the Spirit Breaker Febby. Now Serpent wants to drop as well. Of course, with the Ember, you can go for a sneaky steal. Red, gonna have Roar in about three seconds from now, so he has time to get it up. Gonna meanwhile fall in low, but here comes Forever. Now the Ice Blast. Does seem pretty decent. It will hit at least 458 and Red. Now Febby moving for more. They'll find Red on the Beastmaster, but he buys back immediately. Savage falling low, but will end up surviving. He has the reincarnate anyway. They've left the Ro they've left the Roshan on pretty darn low HP. The Hawk will scout that out from Red. But neither side really jumps into the Roshan pit. Oh. 496 smoke up. They will, but who are they gonna find with it? Well Febby would be pretty decent on the Spirit Breaker. Vivian looks to move in, but Febby will not take the bait this time around. 
Radiance will come out now on Vivian though. That's gonna help the cause quite a lot for 496. Looks like Gunner as well does finish the Ethereal. They are gonna move into the Roshan, scout it out. 458 just checking the HP. Forever will do the same. So that surprise Ethereal Blade. Gonna be concerning here for the side of 496. As well as that, Gunnar did have the Ags queued up for, for a couple seconds, but he, oh, he queues it up again. Hmm. Yo, this guy has no chill, man. I mean, that could be really good with the Ember. That could be really good with Shaman Hell, everything. Really, having a lower cooldown, set control, or damage is always going to be good. And that could be pivotal. Gunnar has been playing around quite nicely. He has shifted into that Shadow Shaman quite well, using that control to his advantage. He, sh Vivian. he could shift to the Ember. Charge gets cancelled off now. Serpent Ward's being dropped straight on Febby, but he just runs out of there. And now the Ice Blast. Yassi in trouble, though he will be okay. Fates Edict will save the day for him. Though no, maybe not forever. He jumps back in. He really wants a Shadow Shaman. Meanwhile, Gunner blew up Vivian on the Ember. They will end up not getting the Shadow Shaman. He does get out of there. Though no, never mind. 23 Savage ends up finding Yassi. I believe that was with the skeletons he found them. Now another charge, Febby. Going after Red, he will find the Beastmaster. This will be a dieback coming out on Red. Really doesn't want this to happen to him right now. He will commit the roar. He'll try to get away. Fortune's in and Fate's Edict to try and heal him up. Baby though will happily take Oracle instead. That BB. He doesn't want to die either, John, but he has no choice in the matter. Meanwhile, they found 458 on the SF. Chains will not land from Gunner this time around. The 458 is still a sitting duck. And Baby will go in and clean it up for the side of Jinnus Brass. And there is still a Roshan to be taken. That is a very prolonged time around that Roche, but in the end it does pay off for Jinnus Press. They do get a massive gold swing their way. And after a bit of a back and forth, they finally have that solid metric lead now. 4k advantage to the side of Jinnus Press. They do manage to take this first Roche as well after a, a very long contestion. And that is going to be a major, major advantage that they hold in their hand now. Having two lives on Gunner is going to be big. He is still working onto that Ags. We'll see what he, who he exactly plans to morph into, but he has been enjoying shifting into Vivian because, of course, he misses that Ember Spirit. And he has been doing that to great effect anyway, so perhaps that's really the play here. The added control and the damage from the Slight of Fist, along with the Flame Guard protection and damage, is what Gunner is looking for. And quite frankly, with the Ags, it, it does improve massively, right? That cooldown reduction is just really big. That's going to be a uh, more to allies talent as well so you've got the double charge available on Febby. of course would be too bad to even go into forever as the timber saw and have the double whirling death and chains people do underestimate how much stat minus there is with those whirling deaths so we'll see we'll see what he does opt to do they are definitely in the driver's seat now on the Radiant side. 5k net worth lead for them. Plus Dota Plus has pretty much been their way the whole time, apparently. But now has raised to 81% their way. And they look to push in that top T2 tower now for Rev. Already setting up for it. Though the same thing is happening bot lane. In fact, they found Febby with the Yules. So he'll be able to charge away though. No, Raw comes out from Red. He wants the kill and he will be able to find it. A nice pickup, and now Forev was there to try and defend. You'll only be able to clear out these creep waves. At the very least, though, they do get the top T2 as well. Yassi. Did you see an interesting talent build up from Savage as well? He found the Aegis. He was too agi morphed, although he comes Savage. He BKBs up at the oh. Requiem. Gunner just blows up. Savage now needs to get the hell out of there, and does do so. He only had about 1k HP because he was so agi shifted by that point. They just blew him up. That is the one weakness of Gunner's build. He went all in on offense. He does not have a single defensive tool coming out. Not even no BKB, no Lincolns coming out. His stat padding isn't quite there. So if he gets caught out like that, it's very, very easy to punish him. You can see, see that in chat. My bad. He knows it's his bad. He definitely made a mistake there, but he is still going into that Ags, and again, that should be helpful. I wanted to point out Savage again. What is talent build? Is going for that push, right? You have the skeleton attack damage, you have Ooh. times two skeletons now instead of reincarnation mana cost. Bot lane. Rev, gonna get shackled up. 
458, a lot of damage. Now the Ice Boss though will come in. It will not land. And now Forever moves forward with Febby. They're going to try and go after Yassi on that Shaman though. He is still pretty darn healthy. And Febby, he will end up dropping. Now the Roar comes out. They do end up fighting Forever as well. They found the Shekels on 23 Savage. He will have Reincarnate, but will it matter? He doesn't have any support though. A nice blink or BKB blink. 458. Gonna keep chasing though. Savage, he doesn't have a TP for another three seconds. It won't matter in the end though. He does barely manage to get out and Gunner just morphing into his ally. Double Wraith King. And I was gonna point out to you as well, before that started, John, you have a look at Red. He actually went for the Agony Scepter build on the Beastmaster. So now he's got zero cooldown on the Wild Axes. That, that's going to be great for the chase potential. That's going to be great for uh, cutting off that timber saw as well. You kind of are able to cut off his retreat route. You cut off all the juke spots. It's, it's just really useful to have overall. I, I guess in terms of that uh, map control, uh, the damage is, a, an, is an added plus. Of course, it does stack up with that damage amp. So as long as you can keep landing them, you can melt heroes like the timber saw quite well. And we saw that to effect again. Eh? For Ev. He's trying the best with his hero, but it does feel like he's reaching that point where he is tapering off, right? We're at 30 minutes in. The Timber Saw, very strong that early to mid game, but as you approach that late game, it's not as formidable as it once was. Certainly agree. In this process. It's like Gunnar will have that Agonim Scepter now, though. He's actually looking into a Mioli next on the Morphling, so this is uh, becoming a very interesting build, to say the least. We'll morph into the Spirit Breaker, and so you do have the double charge available. Maybe gonna lead the way. Show him how it's done. And I won't opt to charge anyone quite yet. There are a lot of heroes missing off the map. Vivian will show himself at the bot lane and forever again will try to jump him but can't really lock him down. Meanwhile, around the Roche Pit, Serpent Wards were dropped onto Febby, but a double charge comes in. Still, the Roar was out on the False Promise as well on Red. Yassi, though, dropping to 23 Savage. Now Red's in trouble as well. The False Promise about to wear off, and I think he's dead anyway, and does go down. Two big pickups here for the side of Dinas Brass. Can they find anybody else? Looks like they won't even care to anyway. They'll just start farming up a bit more. In fact, I say that. Charge is there on 458, and it's a double charge coming out. Here we go. 458 gets one Yules off, but you can't get both of us. Gunner will back oh. off, and he'll go after the Oracle, who just showed up in the middle of nowhere. That BB. <laughs> Bebby trying to find the Nether Strike and can't quite. Gunner has the charge available. The Fate's Edict is there, but it won't matter. And now 458, he has the BKB to get out of this one. Bebby does not care. He moves in anyway. That BB buys back throughout all this. Now the Yules comes out, 458, he has Requiem but doesn't set up for it. Still Febby does end up going down and now Vivian, he's going to go after 23 Savage and Gunner at the same time. The Gunner should be okay though, no, nice Shackles comes out from the Shaman. Still Manta Dodge Gunner, he's going to be able to get out of there. Now the Reincarnation Life, 23 Savage, he'll go oh, after Yassi, he'll find the kill and how do you get on top of this cliff if you are 496? The answer is you just don't. <laughs> and meanwhile, oh, top, man. top Rax John. <laughs> it's the, the skeletons. <laughs> oh, holy. That build is paying off from Savage. Every time he summons them and they walk off into a lane, you have to go back. Times two, ta uh, you know, plus damage. Times two spawn. You can't, you can't ignore that. It's a lot of damage coming out. And they've already lost their range racks. Oh, man. Oh, it's kind of hilarious to watch 23 Savage. <laughs> It's so rare you see a build come out like this on the Wraith King. But, it, you know, like you said, it is it is actually working because it's so hard to know what's going on across the map. Like, you see Febby and Gunner charging constantly. And it's like, what do you look at? Do you actually watch your base while you're getting charged at by two, you know, space cows at the same time? Probably not. You'll probably just ignore the fact that there's skeletons running into your base taking down your axe. Now go, they'll go for the shrine up the top lane. A lot of skeletons coming out, each hitting for 72 damage. That's impressive. Yep. It's gonna be hard to stop that push. Baby, trying to set up on Vivian. Now, 
Well, they'll jump on straight on the Oracle. That baby in trouble though. False Promise will come out on himself. Now Shackles Forever falling low, but the Ice Blast is coming in and will actually connect onto three here. It's a very nice one. And now Febby just charging in once again. 23 Savage. He found that BB. Serpent wants to drop, but they blow up Vivian on the Ember. He buys back as well. 458 in a bit of trouble right now. The Raw comes up from red and now the Requiem. He turns it around. Febby goes down as well though. 458 is stunned to four quite low. Lincoln's has been broken. Gunner, where are you charging to, sir? He'll morph back into the Morphling and they'll go after the dieback on Vivian and he doesn't he hasn't got any remnants out. Oh man. A dieback on the Ember. Hex is there onto Forever. At least they find the Timbersaw. And Gunner now gets shackled up as well. 458 moving in, but 23 Savage is there. Still the Lincoln's blocking it off and Gunner does end up going down. Savage doesn't have reincarnate, so he needs to get out of there. But again, the Hex comes out from Yassi. Now Red, how many times can you stack up those axes? He doesn't have matter anyway, so 458 will take care of the damage. And somehow, they end up defending their base. They, they really do, and it's down to Jinnisper is forcing that fight by the tier 3 down bot. Because they couldn't even chip away at that objective, despite being there. Because that tier 2 was still standing behind it, uh, in front of it. So, they don't manage to do anything, they just cop a lot of damage there. They, they really overextend, right? They overstay their welcome just a bit. You're starting to see a few issues coming out from Jinnisper, but I like this response from Savage. He is building up into the Aghanims, Mike. Oh, I love it. I absolutely love it too. That's fantastic. Why not? Why the hell not, I always say. What, what is the reason though? Like for the Ags, like is it just... I guess having that secondary life on every single hero on your team is going to be pretty useful. Considering, especially like someone like Febby who just keeps charging into everybody with no teammates. In fact, he's looking yeah. at them right now. Take it easy, Febby. You don't need to charge in. Oh... <sighs> But this is a huge opening for 4 to call. 4 5 8, they jump in, the shackles are there, but Febby, he has the Glimmer Cape up. Still surviving, but it will end up going down in the end. And 4 9 6, understanding their position right now. Jinnus Frost, they're in trouble. They haven't got buybacks available on most of their heroes. Mid tier 3 does end up going down, and 4 5 8 says, let's keep going for more. He will be able to claim that melee barracks off the side of Jinnus Frost, and that is a big turnaround there for 4 9 6. I mean, their draft is meant to stop, meant to start dropping off now, but it just feels like they know how to play this like the back of their hands. It does look that way. Again, you are at 25 now and a lot of your heroes as well, so you do have a massive spike coming back their way. I mean, that 40% cooldown reduction on the SF is big. He can just keep spamming out his spells and all items as well, so he has that going for him. And you also have some spikes coming out from the other heroes as well. You still have to reach that point with Vivian. But we'll see if they do go for that Remnant Charge Restore along with the Ags coming out. That could be big and that makes a very hard to catch hero even harder to catch out. Well now a 3k net worth lead to the side of 496 and look at that win probability again. It's started going the way of 496. What's that net worth? Been all over the place but it is their way as well. lane. Yeah, starting to push that wave in once again, trying to apply that pressure, but there is a smoke coming out from Jinnus Bruss. Savage will just kind of reveal it though. Oh, Lincoln Sphere on Gunner. Gonna make it a lot harder to get that control off on the Morphling, which is really the, uh, it just seems like the Shadow Shaman is the one thing that's really locking this Morphling down and just keeping him down the whole time. Most of 496 are just sitting in the mid lane, so they won't find anything by going to the die jungle. 496 are also in a position to go for the Roshan if they really want to. It is up. Still 496 though. They'll go for that mid push once again. Looks like the bot lane will also push in. So they're going to try and force a rotation back from Jinnisbrus and then perhaps go for the Roshan though. Jinnisbrus will just go for the Roshan themselves. They say screw it, keep pushing in that bot lane. 
We'll just take this uh, this Aegis and Cheese, and they are moving in though. 458 BKB's up, though the Aegis has been taken. Cheese as well is off the deck. 458 though, Requiem was out, but they go straight after Yassi on that Shaman. Now, the SF, False Promise will be there in the nick of time, but they blow up that BB. Yassi holding back Febby, making sure he goes down before he dies himself. Red though, not going to be so lucky, although maybe he will be. They get the reincarnation life, but there's a stun flying out to Red. And it will eventually find him, I'm sure, though. No, the Glimmer Cape will actually keep him alive through the magic damage. So, 496. Still a 2 for 1 trade, or excuse me, a 2 for 2 trade again if you count that reincarnation. They do end up losing out on the Aegis. And the Cheese, for that matter. Oh, this guy has no chill, man. On the brighter side, I guess the Aegis is on Savage, so. You'd rather give it to Gunner on the Morphling, but. Now you got to deal with three Wraith King lives. It that could be enough. I mean, we have seen a couple of times where Savage does kind of just get away with a sliver of HP, or you know, sometimes he dies right before that reincarnation comes up. So he lives long enough that you could possibly get two reincarnations off. That's gonna be annoying to deal with. Of course, that does come at the tail end of a team fight when everyone else is pretty much dead as well. The one thing right now for Savage is that he has enough gold to straight out buy off one Agnum Scepter. He, it looks like he wants to get that blessing though. So he wants that buff instead. Doesn't want it to eat a slot. He's going to have to farm about 300 gold more. If he does that, he's not going to have buyback. Let's see if it pays off for Savage. Vivian going for a uh, green call by the looks of it though. Lincoln Sphere is up first for him. The mid lane, Febby, or Gunner, in fact, going to be charging in. Goes straight after Yassi and they will burst down the Shadow Shaman. The Ice Pass does connect and now that BB is in trouble on the Oracle. He false promise red on the Beast Mask and they buy back immediately. Do they keep going on the on the side of Genus Bros? They still have that Aegis available on 23. They are posturing around the dire base. They do move into that bot lane now, though. The Hex comes out on 23 Savage. Rev. Just going to be staying on the front lines. Fairby threatening with the charge. That tier 3 just going down so darn quick. Savage is starting to fall quite low in terms of HP. But again, he has so many lives to, to deal with this, uh, this side of 496. And now another Hex will come out. Garner going for the charge, but cancels that off. He'll start on that melee barracks. In fact, 23. He just jumps in. BKB up as well. Ice Blast. He's going to connect on to this time around. They just want that Shaman. Yassi, he does end up going down. The Requiem does come out. It's not going to be enough though. Gunner blowing up that BB in the back lines. And now Red goes down as well. Two heroes down. No buyback available. Red will buy back. Are they diving the fountain? Not quite. But they are threatening to. They'll take that bot racks. They'll rotate to the mid racks. And I mean, they're in position to just get Megas now. The main problem is gone, and that was the support to 496. We still have that Aegis on Savage available as well. Now a Hex goes out onto uh, onto the SF, though. 458 going to end up being okay. Raw does end up coming out onto the Timber, but where's the follow-up? Vivian, he's trying to get the damage out, but Febby now just charges back in. Red, this is going to be a dieback on the Beastmaster. If he does go down Savage, he really wants it. He will not find it. Although that Wraith Fire Blast will follow Red, but he blinks away from it. And now Gunner going to charge in. He goes straight <laughs> after 458. The Ice Blast does come out as well. 458, he goes down. He'll have buyback though. He'll buy back immediately. And now Gunner needs to get out. But 23 Savage jumps back in. Vivian, he doesn't want to die. He has no buyback. He's gone. Red just going to have to stand in the fountain and spam his axes. This game just all over the place this whole time. The 33 to 33 is the score now. 21k oh. net worth lead for the side of Genus Bros. They're going for more, it looks like. The T4 tower is under siege now. How do you defend if you're 496? You've still got three lives on 23 Savage at the moment. 458, gonna try and take one of them, though. There will be a charge. That BB is gonna be the target. Yules comes out. Now the Ice Blast will connect onto that BB, and they're gonna go after Reddit, it looks like, and they take him down. It's a dieback on the Beastmaster. 
Gunner will charge into the fountain now. Celebration fountain dive, it looks like they will find that BB as well. Now they'll find Yassi and it's all over. 458, the only man left standing. False promise was there, but it will not matter. They just clear them underneath their own fountain. The GG <laughs> core has been made. No revenge will be taken by 496 today, John. Oh, definitely not. And it looked much better than the first open qualifier when they faced off. Definitely a better showing from 496. That was a much well, much more well-stitched together draft, much more well-stitched together team and gameplay coming out from them. It's just not enough. Genesis Res, despite losing a lot of ground early on, still maintained network parity at the very least. And when they did that, they just needed to ride out that early wave where 496 was really strong. Vivian, unfortunately, didn't get online fast enough. And that was the key thing. 496 just didn't have that form on their late scaling hero. Their SF definitely tapered off a bit. And all the heroes on Jinnis Brass side just went online. Yeah, definitely did. And I mean, look, Jinnis Brass, they're looking pretty darn good. It's a very unique style of play from this team. And a lot of people do call it Korean Dota, which it does feel like. Of course, the uh, old MVP stack, definitely, uh, definitely a bit reminiscent of that. Nevertheless, John, we do have two more series on this channel on today. It is going to be uh, Mineski versus Adroit next by the looks of it. So, another interesting matchup there. And of course, after that, we'll get to see Genesis Brass once again. This time around, though, as the last game, they'll be up against Boom ID, which I think would be their hardest matchup today. But we'll see. For the moment, though, Mineski Gaming versus Adroit will be coming up very, very soon, ladies and gentlemen. It is MLP Dota and Dronix Fire. We'll see you guys in just a moment for that next series.